So this is the iPhone 15 Pro and it's running the iOS 18 beta one. And then over here I have the iPhone 15 Pro Max running iOS 17.5.1. By the end of this video, you're gonna find out how well this iOS 18 developer beta one is performing. All right, so let's go ahead and begin this test with a boot up in three, two, go and see which one could get there first. Now, I think it's gonna be the iPhone 15 Pro Max, but we'll see. And shout outs to everybody who watched the iOS 18 beta one review. That video actually made it on the trending, which is unbelievable. Um, that doesn't usually happen on all the videos here. So thank you very much for your support. It looked like the iPhone 15 Pro actually did boot up a little bit faster. That could have been my thumb. But generally, that was about the same. So iOS 18, not looking very different in the boot up. Um, no increases in speed there. Okay, so when it comes to unlocking, have I been having bugs with Face ID? And the answer is no. By the way, I actually switched over to the 15 Pro. You can see my main SIM is in here right now, but no real issues with Face ID. One thing I have noticed though, very quick here on 17.5, Point one. one thing I have noticed though is that the phone is getting hot again. Like they fixed it when the 15 Pros came out and now it's getting hot again. Of course, I'm not complaining. It's beta one. I expect this. I'm just saying it's an observation. So if you do download developer beta one, expect a little bit more heat um, on your iPhone. You're definitely going to feel it a little bit more as this software is just not as optimized as their latest, you know, official one that runs on all the phones. So there is a risk that comes with using these devices on these betas. Now, I actually do have to show you a bug I actually captured on camera. All right, so here's the bug that I caught on camera live. So basically the wiggle over there where I'm trying to move the icon around, it wouldn't go away as you can see right there. It's still just on the screen and I pulled out another calendar from that same wiggle. You can't, you couldn't actually even click that. I had to restart the phone. So there's definitely bugs that are taking place here within the iOS 18 like that. So do keep that in mind. This is not gonna be the most stable software out there, especially on this dev beta one. General user interface, um, it definitely feels still super smooth as you would expect from iOS and the animations are quite good. It's just some of the applications are crashing and not working as stable as you might like. Over here for the you can see right here on the iPhone 17.5.1, 15 Pro Max, everything is butter and everything works flawlessly day to day. So I also noticed that when you tint the icon, sometimes the apps kind of disappear. So let's go ahead and show you this. Hit customize up here, tint the icons. And let me go ahead and just pick a random blue or something like that. Now, when I scroll through, you'll see Sometimes the icons are not all properly tinted. Of course, it's gonna be correct here on camera. Let me go ahead and try this again, see if I can emulate that bug. So let's make them large and then just pick some random color. You see right there, there we go. So they'll just kind of like not be ready. You could see some applications are not properly tinted. And there you go. So we, we gotta get out of large here. Let's go to customize, back to small. Also, sometimes when you are kind of going between, sometimes it'll get stuck in the large icons and stuck in the small, and it won't like actually respond to what you're telling it to do. So some of those newer features are where you're gonna see more of the delays, especially. All right, so here we go. I have the apps lined up the same on both, not in the same orientation. I purposely brought them down to showcase the differences, how you can put apps wherever you want on the home screen for iOS 18. You can see everything is closed out. Let's begin with calendar. And you could see about the same. Let's go into clock and you could see about the same. Again, these are both A17 Pro chips. I wanted to make it as fair as possible. These are also the only two iPhones that will support the Apple Intelligence that are currently for sale. So this Apple Intelligence might spur on a super cycle um, for I Apple, which basically means a bunch of people are gonna have to upgrade if they want the new Siri, they want the new iPhones. Do you think that was done on purpose or do you think it's literally because the AI requires more power? What do you guys think? Do you think it was just done to get more iPhone sales or because it literally needs, the intelligence literally needs more power? Or maybe it's a combination of both. Let's go down to App Store. Either way, um, I do have to make that known to you guys that even the base 15s are not getting Apple intelligence. Now, as you're seeing through, as we go through these applications, you're not seeing a massive difference in the way of performance. And the truth is, is after using the 15 Pro, 
on iOS 18 Dev Beta 1 the past couple of days, you don't really get too many crashes in your day-to-day apps, but when you need it the most, when you're kind of focused and doing something, you're popping between things, then you'll just get this random stutter, this random hang, this random weird thing that'll happen, and then you have to restart the iPhone over there. You can see game mode that's all new for iOS 18 came on, and faster here on the right. I also feel like it is a little bit slower, I don't know, for some reason. Let's go into Groupon. Well, the reason is, Nick, it's a beta. Let's go into categories. Let's go into retail. And you'll see a little faster on the right. So both of these do have eight gigs of RAM. Let's head into Amazon. And you can see faster on the right. We'll get into Subway Surfer. They must be doing something where it's kind of similar overall um, in terms of the software. So it's probably not too different. That's why a lot of these apps are probably still running very good. Let's get up out of here. But I do have to say, this is not my favorite performance on a beta I've seen. And I wonder if that game mode launching is lowering the launch times of the iPhone over here. Let's get up out of here and let's go into Tempo Run 2. But you'll see most of your day to day apps will launch. Um, so is it usable? Yes. Is it very functional in terms of like stability? No, it definitely will give you some hangs and crashes. But almost every app that I've tried has worked, even if sometimes I have to launch it twice. Let's go into the Free Fire now, 3, 2, Go. And we're missing one app. I didn't put 3D Mark on the iPhone 15 Pro. I literally just noticed that. So I'll pull that in in a second here. And you'll see... Free Fire launching at about the same time. No major difference here. I just want to show and just see. I actually didn't do this speed test prior hand. I just want to see. Let me go ahead and show you too. In iOS 18, you can kind of just put it anywhere you want. So we'll do that one up there for the last one. I know that looks super messy now. But let's go into PUBG Mobile 3, 2, go. And we'll see which one can launch this first. Game mode does launch. I wonder if that game mode is going to really boost the performance because iPhones already know for great performance. We'll see. Samsung has had that game mode type feature for a long time, as has many and many and many Android phones that are like gaming phones have been having stuff like that. But it's new for all of you Apple users out there who want to really enhance the gaming experience. Let's go into speed test. Personally, I don't really game on iOS. I game on PlayStation 5. I'm waiting for GTA 6, personally. Let's go into Geekbench 6. But that's just me. You can see right here on the right, that launched a little faster. So they're saying one of the main reasons is that the A17 Pro has 8 gigs of RAM and can support much more performance for Apple intelligence. You can see both of these clocked at the same speed. And lastly, we'll head into 3D Mark. And you can see, not a massive difference. So overall, I was kind of shocked there. We didn't get any crashes. Um, when I hit click settings, sometimes it crashes. Let me see if I can get it to do that. Yeah, of course, every time I do a video, it, it wants to behave like a really good, good little guy over there. But when I do, when I'm not playing, making a video, everything starts acting weird. I will say though, see the heat. See the heat over here? Yeah, the 15 Pro is a little toastier. It could be too because it's a smaller phone and has less area to disperse that heat. But generally speaking, I do find that when I'm using it heavier, it gets warmer than it used to on this Dev Beta 1. So personally, I would wait if I was you until they come out with a few more updates, maybe even a few public betas before I actually throw it on my everyday driver for sure. All right, so let's go ahead and see if on the RAM management or the reloads, what am I doing? I'm missing the tap there. I was just too excited. Let me go ahead and slow down just a little bit. I get very excited and sometimes I make these little minor petty mistakes. People always call me out for it. It's okay. It's just, I, I get, I just having so much fun here that I'm just like tapping too fast. Like in the iOS video, instead of grabbing multiple apps, I was just doing one by one because I wanted to get on with the show when I could have literally just grabbed the multiple. You could see right there, there was basically no reloads. So it's looking good in terms of performance there. We'll go here on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Definitely just as smooth, if not smoother on here, as you would expect. I mean, this one is like looking at the same old phone we've been looking at. So it's not that exciting, but because the 17.5.1, 
we're here for iOS 18, aren't we? Okay, so let's go into calculator, clock, and calendar. So overall, I would say generally, kind of going back through the apps, no major issue. I do have to say the battery has been draining much faster than my usual uh, base iOS 17 on the iOS 18 on the left. All right, so let's see if the internet is working properly. Let's hit go. And they're still on WWDC this week. And you'll see just kind of scrolling through the Apple website, working fine, no scroll issues. You can see this is a little bit different as well down here in Safari, where as you click that, you can manage your extensions right there. And then over down here, you go ahead and see, it definitely looks a little bit different here within Safari when you're accessing your toggles right there. So they clean that up a little bit. All right, so let's go to wikipedia.org. I was watching the w Amy Winehouse Back to Black movie. That's why that's in my search history, but you'll see right there on the right, that was faster, so just a little bit. And here we are on yahoo.com. Let's go ahead and click a link. Um, let's see if we could find a, a link that's the same. I don't really read politics, but I'm just gonna open that up to see and show you. It's about the same. So no major issues in the area of internet. One area I've been getting a little bit of bugs is in the typing. Hey, let's see if I can get it to lag here. Hey, what is up? This, hold on, this is the iOS 18 beta one. It is working okay, not the best, but okay. So yeah, no bugs there on the swiping. Okay, kudos, kudos. Let's go over here and check this one out. Hey, hey, this is the iOS 17. Oh my God, where's, that's why, see, that's why we need the little number row. Where's the number row, Apple? But definitely typing, we didn't see no issues here in the video, but I can state that I have ran into some bugs there on the typing. All right, so let's do the camera test. There's my 4GT ready for the test. Let's go ahead and hit the cameras in three, two, go. And we'll go ahead and hit the camera there. Going through. Yeah, so everything seeming to work fine. Um, it doesn't seem like anything is really broken badly. Just getting some stability issues here and there. Uh, especially the new features. That's where you're going to run into more bugs and the new stuff. Like when you're changing between icons and stuff like that. All right, guys, so here we are with the final Geekbench scores, and you could see only one point better on the single core for the iPhone 15 Pro Max. In the multi-core score, though, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is doing a little bit better. Um, so definitely 17.5.1, where it matters, is performing a little bit better than iOS 18 right now but generally just wrapping it up here i gotta say it's really tough to show this in a speed test because the bugs don't really happen during the speed test they usually happen when you're not uh, expecting them the most you'll be playing around with a new feature you'll be going through control center or something like that you'll be adding something and then you'll get this weird bug or something there is a little bit of if you see that right there, there's a little bit of chop there in control center it's not very smooth so they could fix that up. But it's like when you're adding stuff or you're doing something like this, see like right there, see how it popped out of the screen? Little things, they'll just happen randomly um, and it's hard to catch that because they don't happen all the time. So what I would say is that if you're, if you got the bravery and you wanna play around with it but you can deal with some bugs, dev beta is okay. But if you want stability all day, every day and you want everything to work properly all the time, you need to wait a few uh, updates before downloading the beta. I would probably even wait till a few more come out and maybe a couple public betas as well before even considering running this on your daily. But thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you on the next episode. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace. <music>